Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 71763, Lloyd's Race Car Evo from the LEGO Ninjago theme. This set contains 279 pieces, 3 minifigures, and retails for $29.99 in the US. So this is one of the Ninjago Evo sets, meaning it has a whole, like, upgradable aspect to it. So first I'll be showing you the set in its fully upgraded form, because it's the most complete form of the set. However, once I show you what there is to show here, I'll show you what the other versions of the set look like. But let's take a look at the set as it is right now. The idea of Lloyd Car is not a fresh concept, we've gotten Lloyd Cars plenty of times before. And this one specifically does look a lot like the Ninja Nightcrawler from Sons of Garmadon, I don't know if that was intentional or they just happen to look very similar, but they're very similar overall, they're both, like, the only Lloyd vehicles to use this much lime green. I know the Lime Green is part of Lloyd's suit this wave, but still, the Lime Green is very, very cool, but it's interesting that those two vehicles are the only two Lloyd vehicles I can really think of to use that color. But I do like the Lime Green, I think it fits Lloyd pretty well, and it definitely makes this vehicle distinct when compared to other Lloyd vehicles, just not when compared to the other Lloyd car that I was talking about. The front bumper here is a little weirdly shaped, but I think it looks fine. I like how the bottom of it's designed, though, it reminds me a lot of how Speed Champions does the front bumpers of their cars. And it makes the front part of the car feel a lot more complete. You have two stud shooters in the center. These are the newer stud shooter pieces introduced with the Batman wave from 2021. But of course, you push down on them and then the studs will shoot out. And instead of studs in the set, they use trans green circular tiles. Though regular studs do still work in the newer stud shooters, they just chose to use tiles in this set. You can see there's a few different sticker parts at the front right here. This little square has the symbol that Lloyd had for the Lego Ninjago movie at the front. It's like a double L symbol to be the two L's at the start of his name. I think that's a really cool touch. Written in the Ninjago language, of course. The sides of the car look fine, I like the new SCCBS armor pieces used right here, that's a nice bit of detail. But yeah, there's not too much going on, just some smooth pieces to like round it off. It does look nice though. Same thing on the other side, nothing distinct there, I guess a few stickers might have been nice here, but honestly I don't mind it being a little bit simpler. On the top of the car near the windshield you can see there's two more stickered pieces, and in the very back there's another stickered piece with a picture of a dragon on it, that one looks awesome, I really really like that part. You can see there's some bar pieces coming out the side and this is where you can attach the different teamwork banners, there's only one that comes in this set but there is room for a second one if you want to attach a second. But yeah, the teamwork banner on this set is this one, I'm not sure the name of it is, but it has a picture of a little shrine and some arrows pointing to it. I'm a pretty big fan of the teamwork banners as parts because they're all printed so it's always nice to get printed parts, I feel like they could be pretty useful in customs, but as like the banners in the sets, eh, they're okay. And then this area at the back has some golden katanas, some golden blades out the sides as well as more of those golden blades behind the wheels. This area at the back is also on a hinge, so you can flip it up and down if you want to, like, add some more motion into it. However, there's nothing else you can do with it. It just moves up or down, up or down. There's a classic LEGO wheel piece in gold back here, too. I guess that would just be the exhaust of the car, and I think that fits pretty well. And now coming back to the main cockpit of the car, this is definitely my least favorite part of the build. I like this windshield piece, I don't recognize it, but I don't believe it's new. It's a really cool part. However, then there's just this gap behind it, and I don't know the point of that gap. You can't, like, stand a minifigure up looking out of the gap because there's nowhere for them to really stand unless, like, standing on one foot in the center console. That doesn't really make any sense, so there's just a weird gap back here. I kind of wish the windshield covered it all up. Yeah, I just don't really get why that's there. It just makes the build feel a little bit unfinished to me. At first, I thought it was supposed to be like, oh, this is easy access to get Lloyd in there, but no, he doesn't fit with his armor on, which they do show him wearing in the car in the set, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they chose to put that gap there. It looks really weird, not a fan of that part. So if you do want to put Lloyd in the vehicle, you actually have to remove the windshield piece. It pops off very easily. It uses the Speed Champions, like, base car piece, which can normally fit two figures. However, the way they designed this is only meant to fit one, which is okay, I think, but I'm sure you could definitely customize this car to fit two if you wanted. But yeah, you just attach Lloyd to these jumper plates in the middle. You can lean him back a little bit and then put the windshield back on. And there's how Lloyd actually looks driving the car. The wheels on this car are interesting. Again, I don't believe they're new, but they use like these uh, golden wheel pieces that like jut out further than the tires. Not too much to say on them, but I like how different they are from like other wheels we've gotten. And that's about it for the main build of the car. There's not too much here, honestly. It is only a $30 set, so I couldn't expect too much. However, some more play features would have been nice because this is a four plus set. It's very much meant for like very young kids. However, the only play feature here other than like the upgrade ability is the stud shooters out the front. So I wish there was a little more going on here. Normally cars like this have something else, but yeah, just stud shooters seems a little lame. If it was like a nice looking car, I wouldn't mind the lack of play features, but because this is supposed to be a play heavy set anyway, not sure why there isn't more play features here. Just seems a little bit odd to me. But yeah, with all that being said, now let me show you the upgradable aspect of the Evo set. So here's like the base form of the car, and yeah, it does not look good. I do like the idea and concept with the Evo sets of like, oh hey, kids can play with this set while they're building, even if they don't finish building the set, there's still something for them to play with. And then it's like more satisfying when you upgrade it by building more of the set. However, this part of the set's built using only the first two bags, and yeah, you can see it. It's a it's an ugly build. I guess that's somewhat intentional, but not a, not a big fan of this one. You can see the front bumper is completely gone and replaced with just like these two little headlights. No stud shooter anymore, no windshield, which is a weird choice. All of the like golden armor on the sides is gone. And the back 
deck is just blocky and flat. I'm not gonna like fault this set as a whole for this build looking ugly because again you're supposed to expand upon it. But yeah, I'm, I'm not, not the biggest fan of this one, I'll just say that. But now let's upgrade it to Stage 2. So Stage 2 makes things a little bit better. You can see it now has the front bumper back, which definitely looks a lot nicer. It also adds these lime green pieces to the sides. The windshield is finally here, thank goodness. Again, I don't know why that isn't in the base build. I think that's really funny that it isn't. And then in the back, the gold blades are added as well as the wheel at the very back. This is better looking. I think the upgrade from this to the next one is a more fun upgrade than the first to this one. But again, obviously the final version is much, much better than this. And the final version, of course, you guys already saw, but let me show you what actually gets added to this to make the final version. You armor up the sides of the car with gold. Add the stud shooters to the front of the car. Add these golden katanas as detailing in the back. Attach the teamwork banner, and finally attach this build at the very back. And there is the complete car once again. So as a whole with this build, I think it's solid enough. I don't feel especially passionate about it, I think the Ninja Nightcrawler is probably a better set. But for a smaller $30 car, if you don't have the Ninja Nightcrawler, I think this one's okay to get. You don't need it, but it's pretty good, especially for, like, the younger audiences that it's intended for. And it is actually fairly nice looking. Like, this would fit with full-size Ninjago sets. Especially when compared to, like, some of the other Evo sets. So yeah, I like it overall. I think it's good enough. The one and only side build in the set is this little buggy for the snakes, and I think this is so funny. It's such a simple build, but it's so much fun. It reminds me a lot of the builds that would come in LEGO sets when I was a kid. Like, this kind of stuff was very, very common back then, and I don't see it too often nowadays, so it just, like, gives me a wave of nostalgia to get something like this again. But you can see there's, like, a stickered control panel piece in the middle. It's got these tiny little wheels, fire coming out the back. There's these robot arms at the front for detailing, but they could be moved up or down, as well as this orange piece right here that could be moved up or down. And of course, you could sit a snake character right here. So there is how Manga Whipper looks riding it, and there's what Demo Whipper looks like riding it. Yeah, overall, I like this belt. It's very small and simple, but I like how many sets this way have come with vehicles for the villains. Because if you get all the sets, you can have a nice collection of the vehicles, even if they are small, tiny ones like this one. I'm overall a pretty big fan of it, and I really appreciate being included. Nice job, Lego. So now moving to the minifigures, here's the first one of the set, of course we have Lloyd. I've already talked about this version of Lloyd a little bit, but I'll talk about him a little bit more here. In short, I don't know how to feel about this figure, sometimes I like him, sometimes I don't. The thing about him is he just feels like such an overabundance of colors, there's so many different shades of green used on this figure. And while I like how unique the figure is, like I really encourage them to like, hey, try different things, try different shades of green. It does really feel like they were trying too much in one figure. Olive green and lime green and dark green and normal green and bright green. Just feels like too much in one figure. However, I do really love the lime green on the mask and on the one arm. The dark green just feels a little bit out of place with all of that, and the olive green doesn't really mesh the best with that. That being said, I think he's still solid. The colors seem like a bit too much at times, but as a whole, it's a decently solid suit. I especially like the dragon scales on the side. I think that's a really cool touch. And there's that same L symbol that we saw on these stickers, which is pretty cool. In terms of accessories, he comes with a wrench, I guess, to upgrade his car. That's actually a fun touch. Usually the ninja only come with weapons and sets, so seeing a non-weapon accessory, I appreciate that. And then in his scabbard, he holds a lime green katana. All the ninja come with swords that match the color of their outfits this way, so Lloyd gets a lime green one. This is not a new color for this part, but this is a new color for Ninjago. Ninjago has never used the katana in lime green before, so this is a cool way to get that. However, Lloyd does come with that in every set, so it's not like anything special about this set. Still very cool, though. I really, really love that recolor. In addition to his mask, Lloyd also comes with this headband hairpiece in this set. There's a look at how that looks. That is not an uncommon piece at all. It comes on his island figure, it comes in a sea balance set, and it comes on his golden figure from last year. So I know me personally, I have quite a few of that piece. However, not everybody necessarily is going to have those sets, so I appreciate still getting it in another set, even if I personally don't really need another one. Because getting an alternate hairpiece is much better than getting a mask, because we've had plenty of Ninjago sets in the past that have only come with a mask. So having the hairpiece is a nice alternative option. There's a full look at him with everything removed, and there's a look at his back torso print and his alternate face. You can see his back torso print continues that green dragon, except now it's got the dragon's head, which I think looks awesome. And that symbol in the middle of his back says the word ninja, written in the Ninjago language. All of the ninja this way have that, and I think that's a really nice touch. And then, here are the other two minifigures in the set. We have a Mango Whipper and a Demo Whipper, also known as a Cobra Mechanic and Python Dynamite. The Mega Whipper I've talked about in quite a few reviews at this point, but I'll go over him again. In short, the reused Pyro Whipper head works really, really well here. It's so funny, but also surprisingly makes him look kind of cool. The gunmetal gray beneath the orange is a really cool color combination. And I love, like, the coppery effect in the torso with, like, the teal on top of the orange and everything. Around his back, too, he uses the Outrider attachment from LEGO Marvel. 
This allows him to have four arms, so he has two extra arms down here that are just battle droid arms in black. And then at the top, he just has fire shooting out. Yeah, I think this guy's pretty cool looking. And I love getting more whippers. He does come in like every set this way, but of course, very cool to get more. Overall, very happy with him. And then Demo Whipper technically only comes in two sets, so this is the cheapest way to get him. However, Demo Whipper is just a Geo Whipper with short legs. And a stick of dynamite, of course. He is really funny, though. The Pyro Whipper head already looked funny on regular minifigure legs, but on top of short legs, it looks hilarious. Unfortunately, the short legs are just black short legs. It would have been really cool if they were gunmetal gray. It would have just been, I don't know, a more interesting part. But the black short legs work well enough, so I'm not too disappointed by that. And I think the Geo Whipper head's really, really cool as well. The orange beneath the gunmetal gray has such an intensity to it. I think it looks fantastic. He also comes with another stud shooter. This is the handheld stud shooter in silver. And of course, you can shoot it out. And in this one, there are trans orange tiles. There they both are with everything removed so you can see the figures themselves a little bit better. Look how funny Demo Whipper looks. Like his head's the same size as his body and legs combined. I think that's so, so funny. And here's how they both look for the back. They have like a scale design though, obviously with inverse colors between the two of them. And then they are with their heads removed so you can see the full tops of the torso prints as well. So what are my overall thoughts of this set? It's fine for what it is. If you're like a really big Lloyd fan, then yeah, you'll probably really enjoy this one. However, I don't know. This just sort of feels like a middle of the road set for me. It looks nice, but it's not super detailed. There's definitely better looking sets out there and unfortunately there's not many play features in it either the appeal of this set is the evo aspect but the set definitely looks best fully upgraded so i don't know i i personally don't feel like you need it if i wasn't reviewing every set for this channel this is probably one i would have skipped out on i would have not felt bad about skipping out on but i don't want to give off the impression that it's a bad set because it is still solid there's just a lot of sets this wave and i feel like you could probably get other sets before this one and unless you're a super big completionist Ninjago collector, I'd recommend you tap into other themes before getting this one. Not bad, but if you're looking for a Ninjago car, get the J1 for $20 more, because that one's a lot more fun. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please just like, subscribe if you're new. I do Lego and Ninjago videos like this almost every day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.